Hello again and welcome back to Horsch Live, directly from the Horsch headquarters in Germany, the Sitzenhof. For those of you who haven't joined us earlier today, I'm Johannes and I will, I will be your host for the English language sessions today. Well, a quick re reminder on what is Horsch Live. Obviously, we would have loved to have you here in person, but um, because of COVID-19, this apparently isn't possible, unfortunately. So, we thought about a creative solution to interact with you anyways, and this is Horsch Live. Fortunately, this new format actually gives us a chance to present you an even larger and more international seminar than ever before. So, a special welcome to the international audience, and thank you very much for joining. We hope you enjo enjoy the next session. Before introducing our next topic and our next guest, a quick uh, remem remembering very quickly on what this is about. This is Horsch Live, and so we hope not only you will hear from us, but that we will hear from you as well. So please ask all your questions via the chat function of your channels, and we'll try to answer as many of them either after the sessions from the presenter or via the chat function directly. To our next speaker. Actually, the two upcoming presentations will cover a topic that Horsch has been dealing intensively with for about two years now, and that's called biocontrol, or biological plant protection. What is it about? It's actually the biological control of pests and diseases through the targeted application of an active biological agent, something that here in the EU is somehow still a niche sector, but in other parts of the world, like Brazil, this is already widely accepted and commonly used. Our next two guests will share insights on this innovative and interesting technology with us from two different perspectives, the user's perspective as well as the producer's. Gregory Sanders will make a start and talk to us about the practical use of biological agents in large-scale farming operations. Gregory is Director of Operations of Grupo Progresso, a family-structured group of agricultural companies that will harvest close to 100,000 hectares in two harvests in 2021. Their operation is focused on the production of soy, corn and cotton. Gregory will talk to us about using biological control as an element of their integrated pr plant protection, protection system and will share information about related opportunities, challenges, cost effects and benefits to biological management, as well as intended future steps. Welcome, Gregory. Sanders, I'm an agronomist and operation directors of Progresso Group. Progresso Group is a group of companies, familiar companies and individual growers that are established since 2001 in the state of Minas Gerais in the southeast region of Brazil and also in Piauí, the northeast region of Brazil. We grow cotton, corn and soybean and we have also a business of soybean seeds. And I would like to thank you a lot, Horsch, to give me this opportunity to participate to this live inviting me and my company to talk about uh, what we are doing uh, in this presentation that we will abort uh, biologic control in our company here in the POE. Some of main characteristics of Progresso Group is we are pioneer in cotton planting with high technology in POE state. We started planting cotton here in the year 2003. We built our own gene in the year 2006. And since that, we become a reference in cotton here in the region of Cerrados in POE state. We are one of the reference in quality of soybean seeds in Brazil. This we get recently with invest a lot in our unit here, mainly in POE, and use of new technologies to make possible to produce soybean seeds here in POE, in a place that is a very hot and offer a, a big challenge to get a good uh, quality in soybean seeds. We are known by being innovative in our production process 
we always to be pioneer in the, in, the, in the region we are operating. We have some discovery by ourselves, the way adjusting our process by our own to make possible to, to explore the crops we are in this region. We have a, a characteristic of share a lot of the knowledge. We, we learn everything we learn here in the region. We used to share with other growers, and we, for us, it's a way to to make these these mistakes we we made, and other people want to do this, and we can, at the same time, when we share, learn a lot things that we it would cost a lot in our mistakes. So this is a, a characteristic we have is to share everything that we learned along all over the years operating here in the region. And we are avid to new technologies. Uh, I must say we are the second horse customer here in Brazil and we are very proud of this. Talking about our farms, we have a Ouro Branco farm located in Paracatu, Minas Gerais State. It's the only farm we have in the Minas Gerais State. It's the first one the group established in the year 1997 before become really a group. These farms uh, nowadays 2006, 2,600 hectares. Normally we have all the area planted with soybean in the first harvest and almost 70% of the area planted with corn in the second uh, harvest. We have another farm, the Peninsula is the little one we have located in Guadalupe, POE, with 682 hectares irrigated area. It's very strategic for us to soybean uh, multiply and, and give a speed in new uh, varieties of soybean that is, is being developed. We have an Imperial farm located in Sebastião Leal, the area totally is 10,780 hectares planted area. Normally this farm we make uh, one harvest and the, 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 the second harvest only crops to cover the soil and make uh, straw in the area. We have uh, Rainha da Serra, uh, farm located in Uruçuí, Piauí, with uh, 14,300 hectares planted area. Normally, this area we, we can uh, plant total area in the first harvest with soybean and something like 10 and 20 percent of this area along the years we can cover with a second harvest of corn. And the rest of the area, the same of uh, Imperial, covering with uh, crop to make straw. That is very, very important in our region. We have the youngest one, a tropical farm located at Baixa Grande do Ribeiro. Uh, nowadays, 17,400 hectares planted area. Um, we can make all, something like 15% of second harvest with corn. And this area is, is to be consolidated. Uh, this next season, it will reach the mark of 2021. 20, 1,400 hectares. And we have the Progresso farm, that is the first farm here in POE state. The most important area, the biggest uh, planted area we have in one farm. And it's 36,000 hectares is where we concentrate our industrial uh, structures. Uh, we have a, a cotton gin, we have the, the our uh, unit of seeds, uh, located in POE, installed in this farm. Main activities of the group, as, as I said, is soybean, corn, cotton, grow, and soybeans. The, the last season, 2020, 2001, the current season, we will have in all farms in POE and Minas Gerais state, a total of 68,300 hectares soybean, 9,000 of corn first harvest, 
and 3,900 of cotton. And as a second harvest, we will have 16,400 hectares of corn, 1,100 hectares of sorghum, and this soybean irrigated uh, 850 hectares will be at Peninsula in the central pivots to multiply new varieties that are, are in the pipeline to be registered in the, for the next harvest. Uh, the soybean seed business, we have a unit in Ouro Branco farm uh, with a structure to 120,000 sacks of 200 and 200,000 seeds, uh, like one sack like this, normally for you to have an idea, you can plant one hectare of soybean with this number of seeds in the one sack. So this structure can cover 120,000 uh, hectares of soybean. Uh, all with all this capacity, in a, in a structure where we can keep all the, the seed storage in a cold chamber. And our main unit is located at Progresso Farm and a structure to 1.2 million sacks of seeds. Really impressive. We have uh, concept this structure since 2004 and nowadays we are ampliating this structure, building a new big chamber, cold chamber to store ready seeds to, to go to the, our customers. I would like to talk about a little bit about the history of biologic control in big crops in Brazil. In the years 80, we had introduction of use in, of baculovirus to control soybean caterpillar, the Anticarsia gematalis. And that time, uh, the growers used to pick up the, the Anticarsia gematalis that seems to be affected by baculovirus and freeze all these caterpillars and then in a certain moment uh, put all in a mixer and then put this solution of, of caterpillar mixed in a, in a big mixer inside a plane or a terrain sprayer or a plane and spray all the solution in the in the soybean crop. And this time it used to have a, a very it was very heavy the work to pick up this and to make all this process. And we have suffered a lot with the effects of weather the the response of this kind of treatment by using baculovirus should be very preventive not so you couldn't use this as in the point where the caterpillars was giving you uh, damage to your to your soybean where you would lose money it takes a long time to control the the caterpillars so this uh, failed along the years and the, the growers stopped using this kind of technology. Then in the years 90, for big, big crops, we know it's a very popular uh, DPL, Bacillus thuringiensis, and a, a commercial solution ready for use. But it was efficient, not so much if compared with the chemical control, but it was a way to reduce the impact to the interesting bugs present in the crop. But uh, the cost of using DPL was so close to the, the chemical control that it doesn't make sense at that moment. If you compare the efficiency and you compare the, Q, the cost, it represented that time. And it, it didn't, didn't work. The, there was no, not so many uh, growers using this technology at that time. Then you, in the year to, the years 2000, the beans, soybeans and cotton growers in some regions, some more uh, cold weather 
regions where we have a high altitudes, when you have a temperature below 15 degrees at night, uh, this, uh, this main tree crops start suffering a lot with sclerotinia and sclerotiarum. This disease caused by this fungus um, had a, have a, a very difficult and very expensive cost to control by managing fungicides. And that's, that was an opportunity for the biologic control with, by using Trichoderma harziano to get succeed. And since that year, the, that year until now, we have a, a lot of growers in these main tree crops using constantly, year by year, this kind of, of fungus or making, buying these from companies, specialized companies to produce or some producing these by their own in their own farms. And we had a, a big change in the biologic control in Brazil uh, by the year 2012 when we had the introduction of Helicover Parmigera in Brazil. At that time, nobody was ready to deal with this new uh, caterpillar. Very resistant for the normal insecticides we were being using and to control this, uh, this new caterpillar, we should use some insecticides that was very expensive at that time. And the Helicoverpa, after its introduction in Brazil, leave us a, a legacy. And many growers after that started using the biological control as a way to control the caterpillars and even uh, other uses, other purposes. And this created a constant demand for all the biological and this environment, this new environment created after this event was a perfect for established companies that work at this segment of, of business and even for new startups to have an opportunity to grow. And the recent, most recent uh, changing in this segment of business was some companies developed some solutions for the growers to produce their biocontrol agents inside the farm, on farm. In the year 2019, Progressive made a contract with Agrobiologica uh, company situated at Leme, São Paulo State, southeast region of Brazil, that is, is specialized in producing solutions for production of biological control in, on farm. This contract, we made an agreement to buy only their kit, they have a a feed kit for bacterial multiplication called multibacter and they accommodated us 20 bioreactors capable of 2000 liters each so we have a capacity to produce at the same time 40000 liters of bio agents at the same time and this contract this agreement uh, leave us free to buy any source of any bacteria to any other company to be multiplied inside the bioreactors that are accommodated with them. In the year 2019, we used by using an existing building, we installed 20 bioreactors of 2,000 liters at Fazenda Progresso, centered between other three farms to produce and deliver all the bioagents to other farms. And then, November 2019, we started up this structure. Very simple use by mix mixing the multibacter kit and the desired bacteria you need. We could produce at each bioreactor 2,000 liters of the desired bioagent. After producing, we put all the this solution in, of each bioreactor in two IBCs of 1,000 liters. 
and after that analyze storage in a cold chamber or direct use by spraying with our planes. The main use of each products are for caterpillar controls, nematoids and leaf disease and we felt a lot the effects of reducing the impact. So this structure is very simple and we are using this spray in the, our planes as the same as the other chemical insecticides and fungicides to control the main bugs and diseases we, we have in the, our crops. With less impact to environment, we are controlling now white flies, the complex of caterpillars, sting bugs, spider mites, and diseases. By using these biological products at the same way of chemical we used to do before. The multibacter technology creates a very simple table for any agent you want to multiply. In the columns you have all the agent, a commercial product that you, you can buy to use as a source of, of this bacteria, the time of multiplication, the amount of commercial product to per each 2000 liters of the desired uh, product you, you may multiply, and also you have the shelf life of the product at the ambient temperature, the shelf life extended at more or less 50 percent when kept when you storage this this product at 12 degrees celsius and you have the target for each agent you have a target a specific target on the crops and also the dosage of each each product to to control the target for instance this table help you to plan everything you need to Products, how long will it take and how long will it be av available for you to use? Like the first column, Bacillus thuringiensis uh, uh, variety, as a Y, the commercial Shantari, it takes to f uh, f uh, 48 hours to, to be ready. The most you will use is 4 kilograms of commercial product to produce 2,000 liters of the the product and if you keep this at ambient temperature eight days duration if you put in the cold chamber 12 days of duration and the purpose of this product is for Spodoptera species and Pseudoplusa species and you take between three or four liters per hectare spraying to control these caterpillars in any crop it could be soybean, beans, cotton. And here we have the nine main agents we work with in the last season, 2019, 2020. Uh, with any purpose you have here in, in this table. To have an idea what we did last season, 2019, 2020, here you are some volume of each agent we multiplied. Uh, the total amount of bio agent we produced on our bio reactors was a total of 1,210,000 liters of bio agents. Most of them uh, with a purpose to control the caterpillars. Talking about the advantages, so many. You can save uh, interests, bug that help you in the pests control and biological you feel this a lot we, we can feel the the increase of spiders in the in our crops even in soybean even in cotton by using th this kind of products and reducing the chemical control and talking about money saving uh, with I find a, a very simple way to compare what, what's being saved in, a, in terms of money. 
not to mention another advantage and other benefits of the use of the biological control that are difficult to measure. We didn't measure that. But talking about money, like soya bean last year, we spread a biological, it was an average in soya beans of 2.5 sprays, only using the biological control with, with no chemical. There are, so 2.5 sprays, I, I changed the chemical by biological with the same result of the chemical, but with an uh, economy of $4.1 per hectare. If you multiply by 2.5 and the area, a total economy of $488,000 dollars almost four hundred eighty nine thousand dollars in soybean only considering the caterpillar control with biological in cotton we had a little bit more sprayers uh, we used four sprays removing the chemical control only biological control so the the chemicals in this kind of of purples are a little bit more expensive so the reduction was uh, $5.85 per spray, multiplying that by four sprays and the area 4,500 hectares, we have an economy of $105,000. So the total, considering just this crop, these two crops and this control of caterpillars, we have something like $594,000. The pandemic of coronavirus, uh, we suffered with that because we couldn't get any more sources to multiply. We had the multibacter kit, but we didn't, we couldn't buy uh, the source of bacteria mainly the Bacillus thuringiensis and Saccharopolis spinosa for the use in the coverage crops that we plant in the areas that we don't make this second harvest. We plant uh, millet, we plant brachiaria, and we, sh we could have a, 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 a higher economy, a higher saving of money if we could use that that point that we main, uh, we intend to use in this next harvest. So we are in the rain season 2020, 2021, is we are about in the middle of this rain season. So we are estimating uh, economy much higher than the last year. So in soybean this year, we have a, a little, we feel a little, a little lower pressure of caterpillars in soybean and also cotton, I don't know, but I, I estimate to be the same. So talking about soybean, we believe we will use 1.5 spraying in the total area, removing the chemical control and using the biological control. So the economy of a little bit higher this year because the dollar uh, is uh, increasing its value against the real and the cost of all the biological was in real. So this year the economy is a little bit higher than last year in terms of prices of products. Uh, so multiplying 5.02, 1.5 1 spraying to in the total area of 49,900 hectares of soybean treat, treated with a biological, we will have a economy of uh, $375,000. This year, we removed the first chemical fungicide spraying. We changed this by using the Bacillus subtilis. So we removed one chemical spraying in the first, in the vegetative phase of the soybean and introduced only the Bacillus subtilis. So a considerable uh, reduction of costs 6.44 we reduce the cost in this spraying. Uh, one, one spray in total area, we have a, a, a savings of $321,000. About cotton, this year the area is 3,900 3, hectares. For sprays, uh, the cost, uh, the difference uh, of cost, uh, it become higher, $7.04 per, per spraying by changing. Uh, chemical to biological 
So if you multiply this for, by four and by the area, we had $109,000 of economy. And this year, different uh, to the year 2019 and 2020, we, have, uh, we will do the, the control of caterpillars in other crops like sorghum, millet, and brachiaria. The total area will be 50,400 hectares. We estimate at least two sprays uh, for economy because the products, the chemical insecticides we use in, this, in these situations are a little bit uh, cheaper than the other, than the cotton and the soybean, will be a reduction of cost of $2.06 per spray. Multiply it by two and multiply it by the area, we, will, we'll, we expect uh, $207,000 of economy. So, estimating all the, all the use, only based on what I changed by chemical to the biological, this year we expect saving $1,014,000 of savings by change the chemical to biological with, with no, with no uh, loss of, of performance. We had some changes comparing the season 2019 to 2020 to the season 2020-2021 that is in course. We removed the chrome bacterium subsugai to our, uh, from our program uh, because the efficiency of this kind of agent, you should at least spray this weekly. And this, this impact in our operation, mainly in the plains areas to be sprayed is very, very high and doesn't make sense to us to continue with this agent that requests so many, so many sprays because uh, normally the use of biologicals goes with other products, goes with fertilizer, and, and there is no significant change in our, in our process of, of production. Uh, the first as I said, the first chemical fungicide sprayed in soybean which was changed by chemical to the biological in most of the varieties of soybean. So this gave us a significant reduction of costs, but we didn't see any change in the performance of the control of the fungus disease, leaf disease in soybean. And we are concluding our microbiology laboratory to have a sample of, of each production uh, bioreactor and analyze this sample to ensure we are having a good quality product to be sprayed in, the, our, in our areas. We plan some changes for the next season, 2021-2022. Agrobiological company that uh, we make that agreement, we have a contract, is developing a, a feeding kit to produce fungi agents in the same bioreactor, at the same system, we are multiplying the bacteria. So by this, uh, we will have uh, some new agents that are very important in our production. Like we, we will be able, with this work, we will be able to produce Balveria bassiana to control white fly on soybean and cotton. We will be able to produce Isaria fum fumus orosea to control daubulus mites. That's a very important bug nowadays in the corn uh, that requests a lot of sprays to control this pest. And you have to take too much care of the corn. You have to protect against this bug because it's tr it transmits some virus that can make a disaster in your corn. So we expect a, a very significant reduce of cost in the control of this main, main two pests, the white fly and the albulus mites at corn. The albulus mites at corn and white fly and soybean and cotton. And uh, we plan to start producing Trichoderma arzianum. And the purpose of this is to use in the, fur in the planting forum during soybean planting operation to reduce the nematodes, to reduce the 
soil disease that attacked the roofs of all the crops here in our explored crops. So these, uh, these changes for the next season we will increase a lot. This money savings, we are expecting a lot of money savings by these main two uh, new agents, these fungi new agents that we will be able to introduce in our control system. And that's it. Well, I would like to thank you all for the attention. I hope you enjoyed my presentation and this can contribute to your business. And I can, you can contact me via email that I showed in the beginning of the presentation, gregory at fazendaprogresso.com.br or even accessing our social media. Uh, from Brazil, Gregory, welcome and thank you very much for this very insightful and interesting presentation uh, that you shared with us. Um, how's it going in Brazil? We are starting to harvest. Very good, that sounds good. So results. already good luck for that. Gregory, thanks for being available for answering some questions and the first question isn't directly related uh, to the topic um, you were talking about. Um, it's rather with regard to the uh, opportunity to do two harvests in one rain season. Um, um, one of our viewers noticed that in the first ha for the first harvest you plant around 81,000 hectares, while for the second harvest it's only, and that's still an impressive number, but uh, roughly 20,000 uh, hectares. So what's going on with the rest, uh, with the rest of the 60,000 hectares? What, what's being done with them at the time of the second harvest? We used to plant some crops to cover the soil. We need a lot of straw. To, to protect from losing the moisture. Uh, here in Brazil, it's very important to, to keep this. And we don't have a, a window, a correct window to produce corn for in our area. That was the, the, best, the best world for us. And we use another crops that request a little bit less water to, to produce a, a month, a considerable amount of uh, straw. Okay. That's very important for us. Okay. Well, thanks on that. Coming uh, to your presentation and um, to questions on that. So you made it certainly clear that you're using an integrated system for plant protection. So you're not uh, replacing 100% of chemicals with bio biological control. Um, so a question on that is, um, what's the ratio of uh, biological control and chemical control? And what e efficiency level do you see on biological control compared to chemical control? Okay, the the situations we removed, uh, as, I, as I was talking about in my presentation, for caterpillars in soybean, uh, we removed all the chemical control. Mm -hmm. But you have uh, sting bugs, white fly, and other kind of pests, you can't control that efficiently in the system we have by using biological. But caterpillars, that is the, the, we, what, what the pest we most spend mm -hmm. money uh, yeah. in the control, the biologi biological substitute changed yeah. every chemical to biological. Okay. And uh, that other pest, we continue to use the chemical. Mm -hmm. but the fungicides control, we removed, uh, we changed 25%, between 25 and 30% and 30 by using, substituting the, bio, the chemical to biological. So see specific targets, yeah. talking about pests, yeah. we, are, we, we changed 25% and the, of, of control to biological. And the fungicides control, 25 to 30%. Do you, do you see an increase in that, possibly in the future, or um, will that stay at the same level for the time being? So, we, for these specific targets like stink bugs and white flies, yeah. we have, we expect a better control if, by using fungus. We, uh, the bacteria that, the main bacteria that we are producing on farm are not uh, efficient in the system we have. 
But with fungus, that we expect the next season be producing on farm, we expect to control these other uh, these other bugs by by using this this new kind of engines yeah. agents. Yeah. Um, on one of your last slides, you um, mentioned that uh, one of the agents you used in the first season in 2019-2020, you removed that. Um, can you? Tell us a little bit more about the reasons for removing that. What was um, what what made you take that decision? Was it um, efficiency um, that made you decide to switch over again to chemical? That specific agent, Chromobacteria subsugai, was uh, being used to control the sting bugs and white fly. But to be efficient, we should spray at least uh, weekly. So at, at each seven days, we would have to spray again the chrome bacteria subsugai to have efficient control. And our operational capacity of spraying with planes and other sprayers, we, we are not, uh, we don't have this capacity to do weekly uh, spraying all over the, our areas. So there, that doesn't make sense to continue with that agent. Okay. That's why we stop it using. And um, so, do I understand right that there is an effect on workload for biological control or for biological agents so that you in general would say there is a higher workload when applying biological agents because you need to spray more possibly as well as more often? In this case, uh, as I said before, I, I remove it because it, yeah. it would increase the yeah. number of spraying. Yeah. Yeah. But the system we are now uh, the changes we made from the last season to this actual season, we are not spraying more. Okay. We substitute the chemical by right. biological in the same spray. Okay. And the the main the main point is mm, when you use a chemical, you have a need, a need to spray. You go to your storage, you get a product, and you spray. And with biological produced on farm is very different. You have to. To see the need, you have to produce the biological agent you need, and you have to spray that. And you have a, a very lower shelf life of each product you produce, if compared with, to, to chemical. So everything must be very synchronized to be successful in this kind of control. Did you change anything within your farm system to be able to do so, to anticipate when a biological agent is needed? Um, did you, I don't know, hire uh, weather specialists um, or run your own weather forecast system or things like that to, to be able to, to adapt to that? Yes, uh, we have to, like, to, like how do we, we say in, in Portuguese, to have all the area in, uh, in your hands, to see, to know everything is happening, to control in, this, in the right point. You can't lose the control. You have to get the control in your hands of the whole area. That's the main yeah. difference. Yeah. And you have to synchronize how long you take to produce the product. And you have the capacity of planes. And so everything must be, you have to, to be at least two steps ahead yeah. if compared to other system by using only chemical. Yeah. Um, a question in this context um, is, do you spray the whole farm at once or do you check within the fields which area has caterpillars and really needs to be sprayed? Yes, that's re what we do. Mm -hmm. we, we, we spray when needed, mm -hmm. normally when needed. The first, the first spray between the first 40 days of the mainly soybean, uh, you as on demand. But we have to enter uh, spraying for the fungicides mainly to protect from ferrugem asiatica. Uh, I don't know how to say that in English. Uh, it's a very important uh, disease we have in soybean. Uh, you, the so I've been roasted, like, let's say like that. I don't know in the in the United States they they don't have this. We have uh, the, this roast, and we have to protect from that. And at least 14 days, each 14 days you are spraying, and 
If you need to put something to control caterpillars, you put. If not, you don't put. Yeah. Okay. That's that's the main point. Yeah. As needed. Okay. All right. Thank you for that. Um, coming back to your integrated system, since when exactly? So you you mentioned um, in your presentation that you started to produce your own biological agents. Um, in 2019 for the first time um, and yes. was 2019 actually also the first time that you actually used biological agents or did you start the usage already before? Some agents we were using before, Bacillus thuringiensis, we used it a long time ago, some, some situations, uh, but it was our, our only usage. So we buy a, like a DPL. I mentioned that my presentation. I for a long time used uh, DPL, mm. but the cost of DPL and the efficiency, if compared to the the other, doesn't make sense at that time. And then uh, the, we 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 were present to Agrobiologica, the, the company that uh, give us. Uh, all the support to to produce on farm, and we start from zero producing to using a whole area at the same year. So we start because the cost allows yeah. us to do this. Yeah. Okay. Um, coming back just quickly once again to the um, question of, of, of the actual ac application. Um, um, one of our, the audience asks, how many liters of water per hectare do you spray um, with a three to four liters of bacteria? So uh, in, in, your, in your table that you showed in your presentation, there was, I think, like uh, you need three to four liters of product. With how many liters of water would that be sprayed per hectare? Uh, normally, we... we Well, uh, yeah, oh, here you are I'm again. Back. Well, we lost you for a second, but you're back again. Thank you. Perfect. Okay. Normally, each agent between three or four yeah. liters per hectare. Mm -hmm. Like if I u will use three agents, normally between nine and 12 liters, but they spray it. Ah. No, we, we oh. can hear you. We can hear you, uh, Gregory. You can continue talking. We hear you. So, yeah. by by... The biological we use only by plants, mm -hmm. depending on the, the amount of chemical and biological we are going to spray. Normally, it uh, goes from 9 to, 5 to 18 liters okay. of total, uh -huh. of total uh, liquid, product, product. Of yeah. total liters per yeah. hectare, total amounts. Yeah. Okay, great. So, uh, I think it's time for... Um, one last question um, that would be regarding um, the economic effects. Um, so thank you very much, first of all, for sharing um, this profound insights on numbers uh, with us and with the audience. Um, I mean, when one looks at those savings that you mentioned, um, one has to ask oneself, why is not everybody doing it this way? Because the savings that you that you mentioned that you show are so obvious that that normally everybody would have to do it immediately the same way um, so the question is is there any any negative effect that that comes along with those savings so do you have a less turnover uh, less revenue that you have to compare those savings with um, um, or is it actually the true savings and 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 it's it's just a positive effect very generally Yes, that is the only the, the savings I can measure mm -hmm. by changing the chemical, by changing the chemical by bi biological, and the cost of this change, because the rest is the equal and the efficiency we are having in the in the products we kept in use are the same. We we are not. There are a lot of effects of um, not don't uh, when you use this you don't kill. Uh, benefit, uh, benefic bugs you have in, in the crop, and there are a lot of things. Uh, I, I, the nematodes control mm -hmm. that we are we are not mentioning this. Mm -hmm. and so, the difficult to to is not really the efficiency. The efficiency when you have a, a synchronized production system mm -hmm. are the same of chemical by with a lot of savings of money. But the difficult is people to manage, 
to have the, the, the control, to produce the, the agents on farm, to build this. So it's a, it's a, it increase you uh, the difficult to, to, to deal with the problems. You have to, another, another, another thing that is a manufacturer to do the biological products on farm. It's an, another activity. Uh, another activity you have to yeah. to keep in your farm. Yeah. Gregory, thank you very much. Um, I think thank that you. was uh, very, very impressive to learn and get these insights from you. Um, for me personally, I learned that, that, that I think there's not that much um, against um, integrating biological control in your system and I think it's uh, definitely worth looking closer to it here in the European Union as well. Um, um, uh, looks very promising to me uh, what you've already discovered in Brazil. So um, yeah, once again, thank you very much for joining us, for giving us these insights and um, all the best for your harvest and hopefully talk to you soon. Thank you very much, uh, Johannes. Thank Goodbye. you all. Thank you. Goodbye. So, dear viewers, um, that was Gregory Sanders from Brazil with uh, yeah, very impressive insights on biological control from the user's perspective. Um, Horse Life will continue in about, well, already 10 minutes at um, 6 o'clock uh, Central um, European time with our next guest on the same topic but from a different perspective. So I hope you uh, will join us again soon and see you in a bit.